All right, welcome back to the final round here on Yahoo Finance. Time now for our call of the day. Today, we we're talking about Pivotal Research's latest note on Twitter. The firm is upgrading the stock to a buy from a hold rating, putting a price target of $59.75 on the stock. That's up from 36 bucks previously. Twitter shares right now are up about 6.4%, 45.45 as we speak. Uh, and Dan Roberts, this is a, a company or a research firm, I guess, getting behind a company we all know and love. We all are on all the time, talk about all the time. And yet Twitter's business has really just been flat for years and years and years. And um, I know there's the CEO issue, but but really it's just about can Twitter finally, and I think Pivotal would say, yes, maybe, get the most value out of its users that uh, it appears to be sitting on. Well, Miles, you mentioned and allude to the CEO issue, and I'm sure you figured I'd want to talk about that. I won't waste too much time on that, the Jack Dorsey issue. He's still pulling double duty. We remember a year ago when that was such a hot topic. Can he really stay CEO of both Twitter and Square? By the way, do you guys, side note, do you guys remember that he had announced he was going to spend half of 2020 in Africa and people did not like that. They said, how can he do his job? Well, that didn't happen because of the pandemic anyway. So never mind. But this note from Pivotal struck me as extremely circumstantial. I mean, extremely, you know, predictive and very vague. I mean, they're upgrading Twitter based on a number of things that haven't happened and it's not for sure that they will happen. So a mention of, quote, a potential subscription business, albeit very nascent, there have been reports in the last couple of months, reports, I think, so scattered and kind of under discussed that I think a lot of our viewers might not have even heard about this, but of Twitter supposedly looking into some kind of subscription offering. The idea being, you know, there will be base users. And then if you want to pay five dollars a month or whatever the fee is, you'll get some extra features. Fine. The various whisperings I've heard about that don't look that exciting to me. Then they also base their upgrade on the Olympics, which are on the come in 21. OK, but historically, Twitter has not been able to monetize against live sports chatter so well. Now, the argument, of course, is that it can maybe boost users. And as you said, Twitter has been remarkably flat for a while. I mean, people kept making the argument, well, wait a minute, the president uses this thing every day, every minute, and makes Twitter his official platform for basically his press releases. You would think that that would make Twitter a more of an attraction because, look, the president's using it. No, not really. Uh, the user growth has been kind of stagnant. So maybe Pivotal saying that the return of the Olympics will help with new users I don't know about that, but revenue wise, I don't know how much that's going to help. Maybe there'll be some ad sales boost. And then finally, the hopes for direct response to begin to kick in, we think happening. Well, again, that's just like one very specific granular feature that is expected. So just kind of interesting to me, a very circumstantial note. All of us love Twitter. We use it all the time because we're journalists. But man, in general, I find that over the last like eight years, I still can't really convince friends of mine who are not in the media or in tech to use Twitter if they don't. They're just not that interested in it. They can't really be convinced. So uh, I find the note kind of unconvincing. That's so fascinating, Dan, because I would say I have the exact opposite experience. Uh, perhaps prior to Trump's presidency, I felt very alone. Uh, only among the media folks, it's like, okay, we're all on it. Feels very niche, feels very much like an echo chamber. But at the same time, I would say over the last two, three years, as average folks have gotten into investing or trying to follow individual investors, people who used to work at hedge funds and now seem to be pushing their own books, um, I can say anecdotally that has certainly been the case across the board where uh, perhaps they had never even opened the Twitter app. Maybe it was a once a week sort of situation, but now they get notifications for individual users that they want to know their stock picks of any given day. So I think there has been a 180 reversal for me uh, when it comes to my cohort and, and folks, uh, especially on the younger demographic, I feel like the millennial generation, we so often associated Twitter with news, right? But when you look at the younger folks who are going viral, sort of like the TikTok world, they're very inane comments, right? There's something very simple, very silly, uh, perhaps something they ate in the morning, but they get thousands of retweets, they get a lot of engagement. So I do feel as though there is this more niche community that seems to be um, galvanizing a lot of people who perhaps were not interested in the news side of things. And then touching upon your point about the sports industry, I do feel like uh, this note does rightfully call out entertainment, finance, auto, and a couple big sports categories as Twitter being the destination for a lot of that engagement, right? When it comes to, like I mentioned, the investing side, but also engaging real time in discussions around live sports, I still feel like Twitter is the destination. So for advertisers 
who are, whether for one reason or another, looking to divest from Facebook, uh, perhaps trying to dabble more in real-time commentary, uh, Twitter may be where it's at. Yeah, and I think uh, just kind of thinking through um, all the monetization of the platform and of the users, I think about how much value the users of Twitter are pumping into the platform that Twitter itself is like barely using. And you're kind of talking through Mel like about, and and Pivotal brings it up in the note. So you can curate a customized news feed, right? But what does every link basically do? Sends you somewhere else. I mean, how is there not some functionality for when I mean, we see it? And I know Dan is going to laugh and shake his head. You see it in like the, the newsletter space, right? So you have a platform on top of which, you know, Substack, right? Everyone is doing that. Why can't Twitter have a similar offering for this media heavy user base to just keep users on Twitter? It's like a, you know, a sub platform underneath the live news stream. And no, I haven't thought about this at all, but I think Twitter is just leaving so much value on the table with its heaviest users and instead trying to focus on how can I get someone who doesn't really want to be involved in the news at all engaged in the platform. And I, and I feel like it's, again, it's, it's miss like they're not weighting their, their users properly. One interesting thing there, and I know we can talk this to death and we won't, but it's just interesting. First of all, I would say that the, the niche media product that it does already do is Twitter itself. I mean, you know, you can just vary the amount of time you spend on there. I think we are probably super, super power users in terms of relying on it as a service. I don't know, personally, I can't imagine a much more useful version of Twitter they could offer for a fee. But what I will give you, Miles, uh, one of my favorite pieces, digital media, I guess, posts ever, was on the website, The All, A-W-L, uh, back mm -hmm. in the day. We all remember The All, it shut down. And the headline was, do you work for Twitter? And the piece said something like, hey, you, do you work for Twitter? You don't? Why are you giving them free content all day, every day? If they're not paying you, why are you producing yeah. and giving them data? And it's a good, it's a good point. 